Hello and welcome. My name is Sean Lacey of Lacey Maths and Stats Consultancy and this latest video is to deal with incremental area under the curve. A very uh, specific uh, topic to video than my, my previous videos and I suppose the reason for this is um, I found in the last year, maybe year and a half, that I've been involved in various projects where the area under a curve calculation was required and what I would have found uh, is that I suppose you would have seen from my previous videos that I do a lot of would do a lot of work using R Studio, and what I would have found is that I suppose the script for area under curves calculations aren't as I suppose easy to kind of come by. Um, so I just felt it might be just good to maybe share uh, some script. Uh, mainly, I suppose the one that's probably the, the one that I found very hard to actually find script and I had to kind of generate it just, uh, myself would be the net incremental area under the curve. So I'm just going to maybe just work through these three types of area under the curve calculations that I'd often come across. And the last two, the incremental ones here for positive incremental and net incremental, I'd often come across them if I was involved in a project that might be interested in measuring glycemic in, in index or the insulin index. So um, I think maybe just to kind of, I suppose, to just work through it is, um, so the first, so I'm going to, look, for the video, I'm going to look at these three different types of area under the curves calculations. I suppose these are just mainly down to the ones that I'd encounter off uh, on a regular basis. Um, I think when I was kind of coming to terms with area under curve calculations before, I, I would have found that this paper by Bruns et al. was actually very good. Uh, so this is a very specific about gly glycemic index, but it's more the area under the curve calculation is quite good, I felt. Um, I think it's page 17. Here on page 17 of this paper, uh, Bruns et al. kind of maps out the various area under the curve calculations. So the first one here is kind of your total area under the curve, which is basically your traditional trapezoidal rule. But, uh, the second one here then is looking at the incremental area under the curve. Now what incremental means is from baseline. Okay, so it's where you're using your baseline, so you measure everything above and below baseline. So everything is measured with respect to your baseline. Like over here for the part A, total area under the curve, that is basically just looking at everything above the horizontal axis, which is your traditional trapezoidal rule formula. This one here is called the incremental area under the curve and it's a cut method. The idea to the cut method is it just basically stops once you kind of go below baseline. So even though it returns above baseline later on, that's not of interest, okay? Uh, I, and for the purpose of this video, what I'm going to look at is A, C, and E. So C is where you have a positive incremental area under the curve. So any time where your area is above your baseline measurement, that will be seen as positive incremental area under the curve. I came across some nice script, uh, and I'll share that with you shortly uh, on how to actually map this out, and it was very nice. And I suppose I used the I suppose the approach here for this, the script for this one, to help with the total area under the curve. The next one here, part D, and I'm not going to be doing this in the video here, is the incremental area under the curve for the min. So this is where you kind of take everything from your minimum value. So here is the minimum value right in the, here. So anything above that is what you're calculating the area of. And then the last one is the net area under the curve. So this is where you have your positive area minus the negative area. And I suppose just for the purposes of this video, I'm focusing on A, C, and E, mainly just down to, I suppose, they're the ones that I encounter a lot. A lot and they're just, I think, um, maybe, I think, once you kind of see the script to them, then you can kind of say maybe tweak, tweak it to work out the the second and fourth one that Bruins et al. actually has, okay? Um, so what I'm just going to do is work, work through three very basic examples just to kind of map out how to do this. And I think, again, what... So the first one is basically just using a function inbuilt in or using the trap Z function, which is going to be using the cat, cat tools package. The second one here is going to be using a script that I found out I found online, and I'm going to just show you that script. And then the third one then is where I would have kind of tweaked the script from the second point, okay? Um, what I find very good when doing this, especially at the start, well, the, the formers that I'm going to show you will work, but I think what's very good uh, to get your head around it, how it's actually working, is to do it by hand. So what I'm going to actually do for each one of these is just, I suppose, do the calculations or see how the calculations are actually worked out as well, okay? So this is kind of the answer for each one of these, and I'll, I'll go through each one, okay? But first, just let me go to the script. So I'm going to look at the three area under the curve calculations. So the first one is the total area under the curve. So this is the easier one to do. Um, this is just basically using trapezoidal's rule. There's a load of, I suppose, functions out there. The one that I found quite nice was the trap Z function. So you can see here the trap Z function, and that would use then the cat tools package. Okay, so what I'm just looking at here for, I suppose, um, as an example is 
where I'm looking at the time. So it doesn't have to be time, but I mean generally any time I've done these area under the curve calculations, they have been time. And usually it has been either kind of two hours, which is up to 120 minutes, or three hours, which is up to 180 minutes. So for this one, I'm just looking at where time is incrementing by 15 minutes, and then I'm just looking at measurements. Okay, so for the three examples I'm going to do, I'm going to use the same measurements just so we can see how the answers actually change. These are just met up values. They were just met up values, I suppose, to make the graphic, I suppose, some way nice and understandable. Um, and being, I suppose, to work through the different scenarios that you can encounter when you're trying to work out these areas under the curves. So I'm just working out those through, put it as a data frame, use the CAD tools package, and then just use the trap Z function. Okay, and when you do that there, you see then that the answer that you get back is 2,325. And that's ultimately what I have over here on this slide here. 2,325 is I always would say to, uh, to someone is always be careful with your units here. Okay, so I'm not using anything in particular. Like after, I suppose to be fair, anytime I'm doing this, it's where you're looking at blood glucose levels. So usually the measurement here is minimals per liter or milligrams per deciliter. It can vary, and it usually is over time. But I didn't want to kind of put in the unit here because I'm keeping these numbers just very general. But it is important obviously to say the unit of your answer. So it is an area. So the unit of the answer is going to be whatever your y-axis is here. So whatever you're measuring. So I'm just saying it's units, units by minutes. Okay. And this is just 2,325. And I suppose for even before this video, as an early sanity check, I would have actually worked out these all by hand because all it is doing each time is working out the area of a rectangle and the area of a triangle. And I think especially at the start, if you're um, doing, you find find that you're using a lot of these calculations, it's good to maybe just to do one or two by hand so you can just appreciate what the R package or the script that I'm going to show you later on is actually going to do for you. Okay, so uh, that's the first one, which is the total area on the curve. What that basically means is everything above your, uh, below your points down to your horizontal axis. Okay, so I have been involved in projects where that has been of interest, but I suppose it's the minority of the projects. To be fair, and when you think of the title to this uh, video, incremental area on the curve, that's more mainly to do with the second and third one. But I just felt the total area on the curve is just an interesting starting point. So the next one I'm going to look at is the positive incremental area on the curve, and what this would mean is everything above baseline. So any area that's above baseline, that's what you're essentially summing. So you'd break it up into your uh, different sections. I'll let you go to the answer even here. You break it up into the different sections, but you only take the areas above the baseline. Okay. Um, so I came across this nice script online. I'll share it here, and I, the link is on. You actually can see it up here at the top. There's the link. Um, quite good. I just found, I suppose, one typo with it that I'm doing. Look, it's, ultimately, it's a brilliant script. Just found one typo with it that this division by two was actually uh, throwing it off, so that's actually not re uh, required. Um, so I just removed that division by two here from my script, and after that, then everything works out quite nice. What uh, is actually done here is it's broken up into kind of four parts. Well, actually, five parts. You first look at, and I'm going to show you with the image, you're first going to be looking at kind of your baseline, your first area. Okay, so where it's essentially going to be increasing. And then you have four scenarios after that, which is what it's trying to map out. Okay, so if we go to the graphic here, so it's going to first look, this is kind of your baseline area, the very first one. Okay, so that's fine. It's basically just going to be an area of a triangle, no big deal. So your four scenarios that you can then have after that is when you look at a section, are the two points, kind of, I suppose, if you think of the line segment, are they both being positive? Okay, and positive and above the baseline. So that's kind of one area where your uh, line segment is both positive and above your baseline. The opposite to that is where they're both negative and below the baseline. So that's what you're going to see down here. So these two points down here, they're both negative, as in below baseline. So and then so you're looking at two points below baseline. Okay, so that then tells you that this will be kind of a negative area. The other, two, so that's two scenarios. The other two is where you'd have a negative slope between two points, and where you're uh, intersecting with your baseline measurement. Okay, so this that will basically be this point here, this region. So this is for the incremental area, a positive incremental area in the curve. You'll see that we won't be working out this part. So this is where you have kind of a negative line segment, or negative slope but you're intersecting the your baseline measurement. So that's going to be another a kind of a tweak to the formula. And then the other scenario then is where you have a positive, so this here, and again, it's where you're intersecting the uh, baseline measurement. Okay, so the script that I've just showed you here is actually very good for that. It just breaks it up into those four scenarios that I've just talked about there. Again, where I feel 
the real good understanding from this is where you just do it by hand and that's what I suppose I just tried to pick some very nice numbers for the purposes of, of this video and I did them all by hand and then I did them all in R and everything kind of marries up quite nice and I here I'm just doing I suppose points that are actually intersecting bang on interest I suppose uh, stopping nearly start stopping at the baseline measurement you can have a line that's intersecting it where one point is above and one point below and it works out the formula works out fine as well okay so the second scenario is where we're just looking at the positive incremental uh, positive incremental area under the curve, and I'm using that script that I just showed you there. And this is I basically it was just copy and paste. That's all I've done here. And the only part that I did is I just removed that division by two part there. Okay. And I'm gonna what I, what I really like with this is um, the script that I came across is it gives you kind of the three sets of output. So it'll first give you your total area under the curve, which is what I sorry not the total area of the curve obviously, but your positive incremental area under the curve. It will tell you what kind of seg segment that you're actually interested in what it's focusing on as in I've mapped out there the four different scenarios and then your baseline shows so it shows you that and as in what is the area for each one of those individually and what segment has it actually done so it's quite nice I'm going to just highlight it all here and just going to run that and here's the answer so first answer that we're getting out here from this is 750 so 750 is the positive incremental area under the curve so when I worked it out by hand that's what I, obviously what I, I got as well okay the second bit that we get from this here then is it gives the area for each of the segments okay so the area for each of the segments so you can see here that it's giving zero areas and the reason it's given zero areas here is because there are kind of negative areas and this is a positive incremental area under the curve so it's actually not interested in the negative areas so you can see down here it's matching i suppose it's mapping out what segments it's actually doing so you see the first one is zero so that's your baseline measure sort of 37.5 that's your first segment then the next three uh, areas they're all the points that are below above the baseline so that's these ones so look if you look at this this is actually what i'll do here is i'll just minimize this fraction there that's easier okay i lost it there again come back to it here okay so if you look here so you can see look it's looking at the three first segments is what it's saying here so that's where you have your two points if you think of your line segment here and they're above your baseline that's what you actually have here okay and then it's not looking at any of these because these are on below so that's why they're all zeros okay and then it's looking at the last one because again your points are above okay we let you this even makes more sense then when you see the i suppose the the third scenario of where we're looking at the net area under the curve okay so uh, it's quite good i think it's quite nice and i think the reason look you'd say well, why am i doing this video at all uh, i think the reason i'm doing it i suppose is mainly down to the third one the net incremental area in the curve i found when i was looking to uh, find that code uh, it was a year and a half ago at this point that it wasn't actually easy code. I, I didn't come across it and i had to just basically tweak this one here now this is a great starting point to be fair uh, but i just felt it would be just nice maybe just to share the net area under the curve formula as well okay so the net area curve if i just maybe come here that's this one okay so this is where you're going to have obviously the same positive areas but you basically just want script that will generally generate these three areas below and obviously subtract them from the total so the obviously answer you can see here look is 525 that obviously has to be smaller because there is a negative area okay uh, and just to show you the script then that i have for this so i kept to the same format of the one that i found online there broke it up into the four segments and i've just kind of commented here of where there's the positive area the positive area was the code that i found online and then the negative area bits is the one that i i inputted myself you can see from the previous code back here even if i look at this one i know i'm chopping and changing back so this is the one that i found online it the segment four it doesn't do that okay it doesn't do segment four because segment four is where your two kind of points are below the line below your baseline so that you just defaulted to the zero but that's uh, that's obviously what has to be a small bit different than when we're doing a net incremental area under the curve okay so i'm just going to run all that first and it gives the same answers because i basically kept the same structure of that script it gives the same answers here uh sorry same output so here we're getting 525 i'll throw up the pdf so we can just see 525 um what's different here then is it's giving the three areas here okay so if you look at the first one 37.5 that's from kind of saying a segment zero which is your baseline okay then your next three sections are all the positive ones here so these are where your two points are above um the baseline then if you look down here see this 112.5 so this this is where the two points are below the baseline measurement so according to the script this should be section four or segment four and you can see here look 112.5 and if you see here it's segment four okay uh where else then is this one here 
This one here is where you have a point. It's basically where you're intersecting the baseline. So when you're intersecting the baseline, but it's a negative slope, that's what sec segment three is about. So this is where we are intersecting the baseline because it's just right here and there at this point, and it is a negative slope. So that's what uh, segment three is on. And then segment two is the opposite. So it's where you're intersecting the, um, your baseline again, but it's a positive slope. Okay, and then you can see that the answer is minus uh, 75 in that case. Okay, now when they say intersect, intersecting, I, if I suppose for this video, I kept it very straightforward that it is literally start stopping on the baseline. But if it crossed the baseline, it still works. Okay, I have uh, tried it out for that and it still works. So that's just quite quite nice code for that. Um, I really liked the, the, the script that I came across online that it had broken up, I suppose, into kind of given the various outputs. What then I would have found is at the start that those three outputs were obviously quite good but what i was mainly interested in is what is the actual just simply the area under the curve or the net area under the curve here so you can obviously just reference that particular attribute from uh, the overall kind of function that was created and i think like usually when i'm doing a project in this you'd obviously have numerous participants, so you want to use this uh, function over and over again. So you basically just uh, generate a for loop, and that will do it quite nicely. And that, look, that's kind of pretty much it for this one, okay? So um, I just felt it would be a nice one. It's kind of different from, I suppose, the videos that I've uh, uploaded of recent. This one is very specific to a particular area, but I just felt nonetheless it could be just of interest, especially this the third example here of the actual net incremental area under the curve. Um, Hopefully you find it good. Uh, my contact details, as always, are here. If you have found this of interest and uh, uh, you found it, um, I suppose, a benefit, that's great that you can like it or share it with colleagues and uh, subscribe to the channel and you'll get updates of when the latest videos are going to be uploaded and everything. Okay, but uh, for now, uh, all the best.